This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. What's it like to drive a truck that can drive itself? This week, the 1044 investigates. Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. Self-driving tech companies have collectively logged millions of miles in either controlled or real-world testing, but just about every one of those miles had an actual person involved somehow. Someone like Ruben Cardenas, a safety driver for autonomous truck startup Plus. Ruben's a 22-year career truck driver, having spent 11 years as a company driver and 11 as an owner-operator, hauling general freight before branching off into a specialized lane where he supported the wine industry. Ruben wears a lot of hats with PLUS, but in his primary role as safety driver, he works alongside PLUS's engineering and dispatch teams on performance testing, while the groups record and capture the data that helps fine-tune the autonomous system. I will actively take the truck in a manual mode uh, to where we want to test at. And then I will weave in and out of, of manual driving and semi-autonomous driving. So a normal day we'll be, uh, you know, reporting to work uh, where the trucks are housed. And um, we will perform some pre-trip safety inspections on the vehicles, uh, start out with that, and then uh, check in with our dispatcher, who will then coordinate uh, driver resources uh, with engineers and see what their testing needs are and put us together, assign us to some trucks. And we will just go out during the daytime and just perform various tests um, in our, with our system, whether it's the whole system or portions of our system uh, that we're working on specifically. But uh, you know, pretty much the day just encompasses driving around, putting some miles on, testing our system, stability, software, tuning, you know, top to bottom, uh, whatever is needed. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we'll perform our post-trip inspections on our vehicles and equipment, uh, kind of wind down a little bit, and then um, that, that's basically it. When Ruben joined PLUS about three years ago, he said the idea of driving a self-driving truck sounded sci-fi, but he's been able to see the platform grow into a level four capable system over the years. He said he's not totaled up his total miles driven, but he did note that during the COVID lockdown alone, he and a senior engineer logged about 60,000 miles. And of course, in those 60,000 miles, Ruben had some holy crap moments. There's no better way to validate the safety of the technology than running it alongside the motoring public that are responsible for nearly 80% of all truck involved collisions. But before we hear Ruben's tales from the road, let's hear from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Did you know that 90% of the ash and soot trapped inside your DPF right now is caused by your engine oil? It's not like you can go without engine oil, so there's nothing you can do about it, right? Wrong. Chevron spent a decade developing a no compromise formulation when it comes to minimizing ash output and maximizing engine protection. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology is an ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging by cutting sulfate ash by 60% and extending DPF service life by two and a half times. Delo 600 ADF also enables extended drain intervals thanks to an advanced antioxidant technology that prevents oil breakdown even at the high temperatures found in modern diesel engines. And by slashing the number of regens, Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology comes with a 3% fuel efficiency increase throughout the DPF's lifetime. If you're keeping score at home, that's decreased downtime, extended maintenance intervals, and improved fuel economy. That's real money in your pocket and time saved. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, but now you don't. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. With our software right now being very mature, uh, you know, there was a, a case where I had a hard cut in in front of me with heavy braking. Somebody was trying to grab an exit last minute. Uh, they cut in front of the truck. The truck assumed uh, the proper amount of braking and kept us, you know, at a safe distance. And I felt, you know, with, with very little thought, if I intervene and disengage, we could very well collide because my braking input might not be enough. So having confidence with the system after three years, you know, driving, uh, I just kept it engaged and it did just fine. And uh, it kept us from colliding with the vehicle. That vehicle got off the freeway. So that was a, a rare case where, 
uh, I trusted the, the system over even myself. Uh, so I think that's just a testament to, to where we were at uh, in 2016 at the beginning uh, to where we were. I believe that this incident uh, occurred in 2020 last year. So and in just those few years, uh, the system is very mature and, and, you know, mitigated that collision. Ruben said he's grown accustomed to some of the comforts and benefits that come along with Plus's driver, namely in how they make him feel and how it can de-stress the mundane parts of the job. We have a, a feature here with Plus Drive that is uh, called Traffic Jam Assist. Now, I have yet to meet a driver who likes driving in traffic and um, having a, a, a part in the development of this Traffic Jam Assist, uh, it tends to drive I, I think like myself and other professional drivers out there. So it's, it's very nice to be able to uh, have the system engaged, enter some traffic uh, and just let it do its thing, keeping good distance, merging with other vehicles at slow speeds uh, is very nice. Uh, at the same time, giving me that 360 degree uh, detection uh, is, is just nice. You know, I, I could be paying attention to a, a merge on the right, like I should be, and not uh, give up any detection in front or on the side of me, you know, and I, I just can't humanly do that. So, you know, I think what that equates to is at the end of the day, uh, a lot of, um, well, you have immediately a lot of driver comfort, but at the end of the day, you know, you have a lot more, um, a lot more energy, you know, you're, you're not putting out so much uh, uh, mental stress throughout your day just to wear you out. So it's kind of nice during, and <clears throat> excuse me, and at the end of the day as well. Now, Ruben's not just out there rolling up test miles. He's also hauled customer freight with the Plus system, a process that requires a little give and take between him and the system. But even in those cases, he said he's probably still driving less than 10% of the time. In 2019, Plus completed a 2,800-mile coast-to-coast run for Landa Lakes from a distribution hub in Tulare, California, to a hub in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. And Ruben was one of the six drivers on the haul. We were trying to... Uh, burn in the system, do a software check, hardware check, see if we can keep it on all, 24 hours a day. So we fired that truck up and we kept it running for just under three days is what it took us to legally drive across. Uh, so in order to comply with uh, Department of Transportation uh, hours of service and those types of things while we split it up between six drivers so we can keep that truck running 24-7. By virtue of his job, Ruben finds himself at an interesting crossroads. How does a professional truck driver feel about helping refine a system that eventually will no longer need his services or the services of his peers? The best, you know, answer to that question is it's not really going to take any jobs, number one, anytime soon. Uh, we're talking driver in, driver out product. Right now we have a driver in product here. It is a driver assist uh, feature. That's currently what we have. I think it's it's very far out um, to start worrying about driver out and those types of things. This is going to fulfill the driver shortage that we currently have. It's going to uh, keep uh, up time on the truck through collision mitigation. Um, it's going to save fuel. Uh, some of those things for fleet drivers will come back in rewards, hopefully with the company you're with. Uh, so I think that um, there's nothing to be scared of at this point. Uh, I think it's only going to to fulfill uh, a driver shortage, as I said, and, and take jobs that it can take. And, you know, with the uh, various facets of trucking, uh, there's always a driver that's needed. So I, I don't I don't think that um, I don't think that uh, is a real big concern once you kind of educate what the system is. Um, and what it's about, I think. But but I mean, it's a good question, you know, uh, when you hear about these things, you know, um, I see where people would think that. Our product that we have right now, Plus Drive, I think it's it's it, it requires interaction with the driver. So as drivers come to work, you're still needed. You're still able to steer. You're still needed there uh, uh, to intervene in some cases. Uh, um, it's it's very interactive with the drivers. Okay, so it's not like you're coming to work pressing a button and then, you know, why are you even there? Um, I think it gives the, the fleet owners the ability to um, take a driver and give them an apprenticeship, so to speak. I, I think good drivers are hard to find. And with a press of a button, you can get 
a lot of combined experience. As somebody who's used to it, Ruben sold on the safety benefit and he said he feels 100% safer with the system riding shotgun. With the safety, um, there's, there's, you know, multiple radars, LIDARs, cameras, all of those things together, you know, they detect and then react much faster than any human can. So when you have this 360 degree coverage going down the road, uh, combined with um, superior uh, reaction, um, you know, that, that I mean, it, it just kind of sells itself. You know, once you learn the, the capabilities uh, of plus drive, for instance, um, it, there's just no comparison to human re, you know, reaction versus, you know, plus drive reaction. If the system is merging with somebody and, and I'm supervising that system and I'm doing what I should be doing, which is keeping my head on a swivel, I'm looking windshield, right mirror, windshield, right mirror, kind of watching some things. Humanly, it's impossible to monitor my left. Now I keep my head on a swivel and I can glance the left, right, straight, can do all those things, but there's still gaps that I'm not able to, to cover at the same time. So, you know, when we talk about a semi-autonomous system here with 360 coverage, and when it proves to you that it's safe, uh, with the example of looking to the right, watching emerge, somebody cuts in hard on me from the left uh, in my blind spot, puts on the brakes and the truck um, uh, applies brakes. And then I take my attention to the front and see that not only did it merge with the people on the right, but it kept me safe at the same time. That could have been a collision that, that was just avoided, you know, because of the system. And, and I think, you know, there's no shortage of, of bad drivers around us at all times, you know, so it's, it's very quick. The learning curve is very short uh, to figure out what it can and can't do. And it, it earns its trust with you real quick. That's for sure. Fleet owners are for sure concerned with safety, but a lot of business decisions come down to their contribution to the bottom line. And Ruben says the driver assist system can pay for itself in efficiency gains alone. There's very high tech algorithms that are involved uh, in, in our system, uh, and it encompasses all aspects of the system. So from uh, acceleration, deceleration, um, detection and managing that uh, acceleration or deceleration, smooth braking, uh, extremely smooth throttle, um, you know, uh, re-understanding the maps and knowing I have a hill coming, gearing up for it. And then I think the key thing is with all of that and the fuel savings, um, you take like uh, um, myself, for instance, I think that I was a pretty good driver and progressive shifting. I can uh, look low horizon, see my, my uh, geographical challenges, and gear up or gear down for those things. All that's fine, but when you when you put it uh, on a on a technological level, and the vehicle can now, and I'll just throw this number out there: the vehicle applies, you know, with the weight that I have, the gear selection that I'm in, forty seven percent for conversation, forty seven percent throttle, and it's able to maintain that and maybe drop it down to forty six or 43 and, and, and I, I can't do that. I couldn't hold that, that precise of throttle input while I'm climbing a hill. You know, it, it figures out how to maximize your fuel savings based on weight and gear selection and, and, and the grade that you're climbing or descending. And th those are all things that I can know about as a human, but it's hard to perform on that level. And I think that's why it boasts, you know, such great fuel savings. And when you put that over, every movement that the truck does over the course of your total miles multiplied by week, days, weeks, years, you know, I mean, it, uh, the, the savings are just phenomenal. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. And if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. And until next week, everybody stay safe.